on that. David Malpass joining us right now, the former World Bank president. David, great seeing you. And I was thinking from your former perch looking over, uh, you know, the financial conditions of the world, um, we're all kind of in lockstep, aren't we, with a trend uh, in most countries to, 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 to lower interest rates. And maybe that will pick up a pace next year. How do you see that all falling out? Hi, Neil. Uh, well, Japan is raising rates because they've been too low, right. uh, but uh, others are cutting. Uh, but the models are different in different central banks. So I think one of the important things is to recognize that we're using really old models in order to figure this all out. Uh, inflation is a lagging indicator. They're still uh, using the Phillips curve, which is the idea that job growth actually causes inflation, which we, I, and I think it's really important that we switch more to a model where we recognize that more production will hold down prices. And part of that is the regulatory costs of production are just too high right now. That gives you the affordability problem that we've got in housing and everywhere within the economy. You know, David, uh, one of the things I noticed that we're seeing in this election year, and we still have a ways to go, uh, is, is both candidates have actions and plans that, that will accelerate, you know, deficits and debt, uh, whether it's through uh, renewing tax cuts that a lot of Republicans, I understand, and conservatives say is not the same as spending, but but at least on paper, the debt goes, if you believe, you know, and in, in, in Wharton folks, uh, another five trillion or more under uh, Donald Trump, uh, another trillion or more under Kamala Harris. But that is one thing that's not being addressed by either side. What do you think? These are huge problems. You know, the government is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so whenever it sees a problem, it says, oh, the government is going to be the solution. That's this talk about having the government build housing for people uh, because there's, you know, an affordability problem. I think we really have to look look at the uh, uh, importance of private sector, uh, of companies. The whole the whole foundation of our free market economy is on the idea that that people are able to produce um, better and faster, and it's not the government that can backfill when a mistake is made. So that goes into the Fed's models as well. I think it's really important that we have a forward-looking model that's based on the new reality. The Fed's still using the same models that were used with the gold standard. We still talk about Milton Friedman and John Maynard Keynes and Phillips, Bill Phillips. Uh, th these are people that are from deep in the history, and we need new models in order to make a more efficient economy. Uh, importantly, on this uh, last point, Neil, is that capital allocation is really important to be done by the market. And what we've got now is the government and the Federal Reserve allocating capital where they think it's going to be productive. It's not a good mix. So if we continue to try to stimulate the economy or certainly some of the plans that Kamala Harris has outlined with $25,000 for first-time home buyers, $6,000 for your your, your, your child, uh, uh, you know, that stuff adds up, as do the costs. Uh, and it, it might stymie the Federal Reserve, right? I mean, if it's trying to address inflation, now it's more focused on a slowdown and trying to get ahead of that. Uh, it could complicate what it has to do, right? That, that's right. And it would be good to know what the Fed thinks about that. You, yeah. you know, they comment very rarely on this massive government spending and the effect of it on inflation. Uh, that, that should be discussed. Uh, it, I, I saw in the, in the Jackson Hole conference, the Fed is starting its five-year review process. So I hope it will look for a, a new way to have dialogue with the government as the debt and the, uh, you know, the interest costs are going through the roof. The Fed has to have an an opinion on that of whether it can be consistent with price stability and what are the transmission mechanisms for that. So I think some deep thinking would help. My view is that we can have um, uh, faster growth uh, by having sound money and sound regulatory policy from the Federal Reserve, and that would go a long way toward helping on the supply side of the economy. You know, David, I, I have uh, our, our reporter Susan Lee and some market guys uh, weighing in on the whole news this week uh, that we had on NVIDIA. But I found one take on it that uh, with it, it, NVIDIA, uh, this was a localized event. It didn't spread to a market contagion. And, and maybe that was a reflection. Uh, I, I think Yahoo Finance had said that uh, a company stumbling is hardly a, a, a day of reckoning for AI spending. And seeing as that's been so 
important uh, for this economy and these markets uh, globally, if you think about it. What do you make of that? Is that a healthy development, not to be focused on one company, but to see this broaden out? I think that is uh, good for the stability of the market, but we have to look at the at the exuberance that's in the S and P 500 and in the Nasdaq. Uh, the exuberance comes in part because the government has become one of the big risk uh, modulators, the risk taker. The 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 uh, Treasury Department is doing that by issuing short term debt rather than long term, so they're not burdening uh, the the economy. Uh, and so, if you if you're in the private sector, you look at that and. Say, Say ah, they want us to take risk, and the same is true on the Federal Reserve side. They're they're slowing down their 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 balance sheet shrinkage, which is the same kind of support for the bond market and the stock market. So if you're if you're sitting in those markets, you're getting this green light where the Fed says it's got the tools to deal with any uh, any uh, perceived risks that come up, uh, and so you're getting this green light uh, from the government to take risk, and I mm. think that's what's showing up in the markets. Very well put, my friend. Very good seeing you again. Uh, David, be well.